this so-called ceasefire, by the way, uh, is nothing but a, f- uh, a fake promise by Israel that they will halt, uh, halt the bombing campaign for about a month in exchange for the release of all hostages. I think it's just a pathetic attempt, a pathetic effort, uh, by the U.S. and Israel to pretend that they're still in the game. Let's put this into some kind of a context. Israel is charged with genocide at the ICJ. The International Criminal Court has hinted that they're about to uh, indict uh, top Israeli officials for war crimes. Every time Anthony Blinken goes to the Middle East, he's disrespected and ignored, and he gets recited to him over and over again the unified Arab position, which is for an immediate and permanent ceasefire, uh, recognition of a Palestinian state, uh, no expulsion of Palestinians from their land, uh, and uh, an end to, settle- to settlement expansion, and in fact dismantling of existing settlements, uh, and a return of Israel to the 1967 borders. Basically, the Arab uh, peace plan of 20 years ago, which itself is basically the position of the global consensus regarding Palestine. This is what Saudi Arabia tells him. This is what Jordan tells him. This is what Egypt tells him. Uh, and of course, this is what BRICS Uh, says as well. It's what China says, it's what Russia says, and pretty much everyone else in the world. The complete bankruptcy of both Israeli and American influence globally and regionally uh, resulted in the Americans having to accept that uh, Iran, a country that they've wanted to have a justification for attacking for 40 years, they had to accept that Iran was able to retaliate militarily against Israel just a few weeks ago. Uh, And the U.S. was forced to abstain uh, from their usual veto Uh, during Ramadan when the uh, United Nations issued a binding resolution for a ceasefire uh, from Israel. Hamas and Fatah leaders uh, went to China uh, over the weekend and met with top officials in Beijing to discuss reconciliation and uh, cooperation. Hamas officials have also met with Mohammed bin Salman and uh, Mahmoud Abbas uh, uh, also met with uh, bin Salman at the uh, World Economic Forum meeting uh, again in Riyadh over the weekend. China Uh, again, has called for an international peace conference to address the Palestinian issue, and Saudi Arabia and the Arab League uh, and BRICS have all endorsed this this proposal. Uh, Pro-Palestinian student uh, protests are spreading across uh, across university campuses in the United States and now also in Europe. Uh, For further context, boycotted companies like Starbucks and McDonald's and KFC, uh, among many others, uh, are being financially crippled all around the world. Uh, And, of course, global shipping uh, continues to be severely uh, hindered by the virtual blockade that's been created by the Houthis in Yemen. The Israeli economy contracted by 20%. Their exports dropped by 20%. Private spending inside of Israel is down by nearly uh, 30%. Over half a million uh, Israelis uh, left Israel since October 7th. Immigration into Israel plummeted by 70%. Massive protests are taking place inside of Israel... Uh, demanding Netanyahu's resignation and demanding for a deal uh, for the release of the hostages. Mass graves were discovered in Gaza, and world opinion has never been more anti-Zionist and more anti-American than it is right now. All of this looks to me like the U.S. and Israel uh, have no bargaining chips, and they're desperate, and they're largely locked out of the real negotiations that are taking place. The heavy lifting for uh, unifying Hamas and Fatah is being done by China, Negotiations with Hamas over the hostages is being done by Egypt and Qatar. Post-war reconstruction and administration of Gaza is being planned by the GCC and China. The Americans, in my opinion, uh, are out of the loop. So when they say that they're working closely with Saudi Arabia, when the U.S. says that, or the U.S. media says that, uh, that they're working closely with the Gulf, in my opinion, that's like, that's the same as someone saying that they're uh, good friends with a celebrity because they photobombed them once when they were taking a selfie. This is Anthony Blinken trying to stick his head into the frame of a picture that he wasn't invited to be in. The Americans are, are seriously acting like it's still 1994, not 2024. No one believes this con anymore. And you don't have the muscle that you had back then to try to make anyone even pretend like they believe it. America has completely lost control in the region. Their influence is dead. But they don't want to admit it, and they don't want the voters back home to know about it. You know, the only card that they have, or the only card that they had, uh, to try to play in this scenario was to threaten an invasion of Rafah if the ceasefire agreement wasn't accepted. But Netanyahu just ruined that card by saying that he'll invade Rafah with or without uh, a ceasefire agreement, which completely undermines any leverage that they might have had. It seems likely to me, inshallah, uh, that this so-called ceasefire will probably fail. Uh, which will be uh, something of a final nail uh, in the uh, coffin of American influence in the Middle East.
and uh, peace negotiations and uh, political resolution process, I think is going to move to a new stage of international mediation, inshallah. That's what I both hope for and that's what I expect to happen. And Allahu Alam.